Hey everyone, it is late at night and I am Norman. Watch brands have their own personalities. Their founders and the talented people who work so hard to bring their brilliant designs to life infuse these brands with a little bit of themselves. But what if the watch brands were people? If this was the case, would we even want to hang out with them? Would we be checking our watches even more than normal because we're so anxious to just get out of there? Would we want to party with our favorite watch brands? Tonight, I'm going to analyze 10 watch brands and attempt to interpret what kind of people they would be if they were people. So let us begin. Let's start with the most obvious choice. The creator of such iconic pieces as the Submariner, the Explorer, and the Daytona, Rolex. Everyone knows Rolex. He is the best at everything. He's the king. I mean, his calling card is a crown. He's like a vegan who has to constantly let you know they're vegan. He's the billionaire who has to constantly remind you. He goes to dinner parties and talks about how he's buying a new jet. He makes his friends schedule time with him, years in advance. If you dare to talk about other wealthy individuals, he'll be sure the conversation comes back around to him. It's always about him. But at the same time, he's also the guy who had a brilliant idea back in his college days. And that's about it. He's been doing minor tweaks to those ideas ever since, but no one really cares because he's the king, don't you know? Add a little text here, change the color of the text there, widen the lugs a bit. Put some different colors on the bezel and boom, the idea lives on. Christopher Ward Christopher Ward has been winning the hearts and minds of dive watch lovers pretty much since the brand's inception. With their trident counterweights on their seconds hands and brilliant case designs, now they're winning over British field watch lovers and continuing to innovate and explore new ideas in their dive watch lines. They've created brilliant sapphire dialed dive watches and really dressed up classy British field watch designs in contemporary sizes. They've even dabbled in Calatrava-ish dress watches. Christopher Ward is the guy who just did a DNA test and found out that he's British. Now all of a sudden he has British flags all over his house and is constantly letting everyone know he's British. He drinks tea now. Anytime he goes to a restaurant, he's ordering the fish and chips, cuz Britain. He can tell you everything about Britain's history and is constantly ranting about those uncouth yanks. If it ain't British, it's crap. He's like those guys back in the day who end up dating a metalhead girl and all of a sudden he's as metal as you could possibly be. Everyone likes him, but whenever he starts going on another Britain tirade, they just smile and nod. Nomos. Nomos has been creating brilliant watches ever since the company got the rights to the old defunct brand's name and resurrected it in the 1990s. Everything they put out is brilliant and they are one of the contemporary Bauhaus Maison heavy hitters, along with Youngens and Stova. The Tangent is an instant classic and their club watches are the perfect everyday wear watches. They have yet to produce anything but brilliance. Nomos is like the one friend you have that can do anything. He can sit down at a piano having never played before and just start busting out actual songs. He decides to start skating and on day two he can do all the tricks you've been struggling to master for years. He's like King Midas. He lands the perfect jobs and will effortlessly make a fortune doing things that only people in movies do. All the guys want to be friends with him, and all the hottest chicks drool over him. Richard Meal. Richard Meal makes gaudy, complicated, super expensive watches. Movie, sports, and rock and rap stars love the brand. It's a flex point. If you've made it and want to show off to everyone around you, Richard Meal is your brand. The case is always the same crazy tonneau shape with visible screws all over it. The dials are busy and loud. Everything is over the top. Richard Meal is the billionaire who seems to have zero taste in fashion or hairstyle. He walks around with what appears to be a dead animal on his head. He wears the brightest, most obnoxious shoes ever made and has to have busy prints on every shirt or pair of pants he wears. 
He makes producer Michael look classy and subtle. He always offers to pay the tab so he can let you know his wallet is too fat to fit in his pocket. He's never walked on the grass before. He's like the worst example possible of new money. Corono Tokyo. The idea behind Corono Tokyo is to produce brilliant limited edition watches that are actually accessible to those who aren't hanging out with Rolex or Richard Mille. Each design is a limited run, and once it's sold out, it will never be produced again. The brand was founded by an independent watchmaker who wanted to bring high-end independent watchmaking to those who couldn't afford the insane prices of such watches. The brand has created such masterpieces as the Akane, the Grand Hagani, and the Grand Irushi Ayomeo. Corona Tokyo is the genius who has worked hard all his life and through blood, sweat, and tears has become an absolute success. But he hangs out with the average Joe, the mechanics, dishwashers, grocery store workers of the world. He's confident and feels no need to show off just how brilliant he is. He's shy and personable, but there's no denying his absolute genius in the skills he's honed over the years. He's friendly and reasonable even though he is way out of the league of nearly all of his friends. Seiko Anyone who loves tool watches or affordable dive watches most likely has at least one Seiko. My first mechanical watch was a Seiko SKX007. It was the watch that got me into mechanical watches and started me down the rabbit hole that is watch nerddom. It is impossible to avoid Seiko tool watches as a topic of YouTube watch nerd channels. Their watches are discussed everywhere. Seiko is the blue collar guy who scored an entry level job and worked his way into owning a company in that field. Seiko is the electrician who spent years as a grunt learning the ropes of the industry and eventually started his own electrical company. He hasn't changed his ways, but now he has money. He lives on a lake and has boat parties, but the people he has over are entry level and blue collar workers. He's fun and crazy and has a bankroll to make all kinds of crazy things happen. Invicta. Invicta used to make brilliant vintage watches, but sometime in the 1990s and 2000s went all in on the jumbo watch craze. You still see people wearing their gigantic monstrosities today. They draw on the looks of dive watches, but throw in chains and other ridiculous over the top components and put those on watches with 50 plus millimeter cases. Invicta is the roided out gym rat that is constantly taking his shirt off and no one knows why. He's swole and oiled up, ready to talk smack to anyone. He always has to be the alphaist alpha in the room, and can't stop talking about the gym. His clothes are just as gaudy as he is, and two sizes too small for him. Mr. Jones Mr. Jones makes super fun and sometimes dark watches. They are all quirky and artsy at the same time. They make watches in 37mm as well as 40 to 45mm. Their watches are affordable and not necessarily made for watch nerds, but are far from vapid fashion pieces. Mr. Jones is the weird rockabilly or vintage clothes wearing friend who doesn't really fit in with the rest of his friends, but they all love him. He's fun to be around and is always the life of the party. He tells dad jokes, but also has a dark sense of humor. He's the guy who thinks it's a good idea to throw a bouquet of flowers at a crowd during a funeral. Whoever catches it is next. He isn't afraid to be himself and has impeccable, even if it's quirky, taste and style. Tudor. Tudor is Rolex's little cousin. Envisioned as a repository for more affordable Rolex-ish watches, they have the same brilliant DNA, but as time has passed, Tudor has developed its own design language and sets it apart from its more famous relative. The brand is well respected and sought after by sports watch enthusiasts around the world. Tudor is the humble handyman. He does top-notch work and has a wide variety of skills, but he is extremely humble and is honest to a fault. If you need work done, he's your guy. He likes to unwind with a beer and some action movies. He's a veteran and an all-around good guy. He's surprisingly popular with the ladies and is royalty among his blue-collar friends. He loves to take kids out water skiing and having parties around the campfire. He's an outdoorsman and a kid at heart. And the last brand, Pagani Design. Pagani Design is the king of the homage. 
Their website even has a whole section dedicated to homages listed by the brands and models they're homaging. They make quality and very affordable watches. Many homage lovers are big into this brand. If you're after a moon watch or submariner, Pagani has watches for you. Pagani Design is a garage hacker. She can build anything she sees, hacking together whatever she has to make a near copy of whatever she puts her mind to. She makes machines and art pieces for all her friends and gives them away nearly for free. Her house is full of items she's made and artwork she's recreated. She loves being challenged by new things to imitate and figures out ways of making them cheaply. She doesn't get out much, but constantly has people stopping by, wanting her to build them something. And she happily obliges. So there you have it, 10 watch brands if they were people. Thanks for watching. Thank you.